My name is Nate is lame and I like music a lot. I'm no good at playing it, but I'm really good at organizing it. Whether that be in live settings or on playlists for my friends. In fact, here's a list of a few bands that I am super into that I think you should listen to as well. I've organized it into three categories. Bands that you have heard of, bands you might have heard of, and bands that you have not heard of. Plus, just to get you started, I will provide one starter song that I think you should hear from each band. The starter song does not inherently mean that I think it's their best song, but rather one that I feel encompasses their sound the best. Hopefully you'll find somebody new. These are the bands that you have heard of. Modern Baseball. I don't know about you, but this new wave of legit emo music that's been coming out has been kind of bland to me. Something about sorority noise and moose blood just don't cut it for me for some reason. However, Modern Baseball stands out because their songs are so narrative-driven with a snarky sense of humor while still being absurdly sad at times. I think you should listen to Apartment. 21 Pilots. Every day, I get about five comments along the lines of, Wow, LOL, 21 Pilots sucks. Anyone who listens to them is super dumb. And I'm like, have, have you heard their old jams? Blurry Face and Vessel are fine and all, but Regional at best and their self-titled albums are fantastic. Regional is the best album ever written, in my opinion. It hits all the right buttons for me. It feels nostalgic, it's cinematic, with crazy variety and a DIY mentality concerning the fact that it was recorded in their basement. Don't dismiss an act just because they're on radio and act like you're superior to everybody. That just makes you look like more of a sheep, in my opinion. Fake You Out is pretty good. Modest Mouse. This was the first band that I ever really became familiar with. My dad used to play We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank in his truck, so I essentially knew half the songs on that album. He skipped over the ones with swear words. This band's sound fluctuates incredibly without ever sacrificing their artistic integrity, and I think that's really radical. They're insanely nostalgic for me, and their live shows are some of the best that I have ever seen. Be sure to hear Spitting Venom and Third Planet by them. These guys get two songs because their style has changed dramatically over their career. The Front Bottoms! It should be no surprise that I love this band, I adore them. They may to wiggle right into my heart and tear it in half from the inside out. The amount of agony and angst in their songs is borderline abuse by my standards, but I keep coming back to them. The pop melodies and punk attitude, along with Brian Sell's really weird vocals, turn this into one of my favorite bands I've heard in the past few years. Give it a few weeks of consistent listening and you'll be hooked. Listen to the beers, please. Gorillas! Everybody has heard of the Gorillas. All the cool kids like the Gorillas. Everybody likes to hate on the Humans album even though they shouldn't because it was rad. This band is another nostalgic one. They're a bit weird and eclectic and I find that it's odd that they're as popular as they are, but I'm in full support of them because they haven't sacrificed any of their musical mentalities in light of their popularity. If anything, they flourish the most when they're in the spotlight. Definitely jammed all alone. Pierce the Veil, I, I wish that Pierce the Veil wasn't associated with the cringy hyper hot topic kids because nobody can take them seriously and that's a gosh darn shame because their music is ridiculously masterful. It's fast, aggressive, and has some awesome progressive rock mentalities. Their songs are a bit tougher to swallow than most groups and that's mainly due to the occasional strange song structures. They aren't just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Sometimes they're just one straight shot of a continuously evolving tune and, as a mediocre musician speaking, that is really tough to pull off. Props to them, they do not deserve to be taken so lightly. Here dive in by them. I verbally said wow after listening to it for the first time and that's a true story. Okay now we're getting into the interesting stuff with bands that you might have heard of. Motion City Soundtrack. Oh my god this band breaks my heart. Holy cow. Commit This to Memory is the saddest album that I've ever heard and that's just because I heard it in the right place at the right time. This is my favorite of all emo mid-2000s bands and I was crushed when they broke up. You should hear Time Turn Fragile. Cave Town. This dude is so cool. Cave Town is one of my favorite indie artists and he makes some rad YouTube content as well. His Lemon Boy music video like freaking blew me away. He deserves a lot of love and support. Be sure to listen to This Is Home, which I am evidently a very big fan of. The Use. These guys are has-beens in terms of popularity, but they're peaking right now in terms of quality. The Canyon by The Used is my favorite album of 2017, and the raw and pure emotional intensity from this album consistently gave me goosebumps while listening. Like, it elicited a physical response from my body. Their older material is very similar to Revenge era My Chemical Romance if you're into that. I highly recommend this group and you should listen to Dark Days. McCafferty. It is super unfair to call these guys an angry or front bombs because they're a lot more than that. This is a strange comparison. They're like if Bojack Horseman turned into an emo dance punk band. They both have strange and over the top humor that serves to make the crushing and dark lows that much more horrific. When this band wants to party, they get crunk. When they want to get sad, they get really, 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 really sad. They're the only band that I own the entire commercially available discography on vinyl to. Bravo, guys. You should jam out to Beach Boy, which is as close to a personal anthem of mine as I can find. Emma Noodle, she she counts, right? You've probably seen Emma Noodle around since she's like kind of blown 
up right now. She's mostly known for covering alternative music on ukulele and keyboard, but she also cranks out some pretty great originals from time to time. She's got enough material to do a full-length album, so like, why not get on top of it, homie? There's no way that she's not working on one. When it comes out, I will definitely bump it in my car, and I will send it to all my friends. She kind of has like an Oh Hello vibe about her, which is another band that you should check out, by the way. Her channel is in general one of my favorites. The fact that so much of her personality shines through, even though she very seldom talks about herself in her videos, is pretty cool. She separates herself pretty well from other alternative cover channels, and I Should Go is definitely worth your time. Pretty much anything Frank Iro touches, Frank Iro used to play guitar in My Chemical Romance. What's so compelling to me is that he went from playing in sold out arenas to crusty coffee shops and basements in less than two years. And no, I'm not saying he went from basements to arenas, I'm saying he went from arenas to basements. He still pours his heart into all of his material. Leathermouth is some fantastic thematic post-hardcore borderline horror punk bangers. The Celebration is excellent emo punk. Death Spells is hardcore glitch punk. And The Patience is wonderfully condensed pure sad New Jersey vibes. I honestly prefer all of these releases to My Chemical Romance, and that's saying quite a bit because that band is plenty nostalgic to me. Listen to Catch Me If You Can, Tradition, Choke On One Another, and Veins, Veins, Veins. These are like all different bands, so they all get different recommendations. Jeff Rosenstock, this dude is the current king of punk rock right now. He embodies punk and has become an underground cultural icon. He used to sing for Bomb the Music Industry, but his solo act is like really taken off right now. Jeff sings with brutal honesty about growing up, dealing with mental illness and addiction, and plenty of political subjects. He's definitely a really good role model if you're looking to be a musician yourself. Definitely here at You in Weird Cities. Oh boy, now we're delving into the darkest depths of my music taste. These are the folks who you really have not heard of. Legit, these guys are really tough to hunt down unless you know the artist personally or you live near them. Hopefully you're familiar with Bandcamp because these guys pretty much all live there. King and Queen of the Losers, I plug this stupid band whenever I can because I love them. They have such a clear aesthetic that comes through in both their music and their visuals. Think if Portlandia met Tim and Eric at an AA meeting kind of thing. They're rough around the edges and they have some serious rock influences and a DIY attitude and a really good YouTube channel, by the way. You should definitely watch a podcast I did with them the other week, too. I talk about infiltrating a Mormon convention, and that's a pretty good story. Listen to World War Me by them because they are fantastic and I love them a lot. The Whippin' Poopies. I mean, they're not called the Whippin' Poopies, but I mean, my grandma watches my channel and I can't be saying the SH word, you know? It is ridiculous that I'm not a part of this band because they are modern baseball meets the front bottoms meets a video game donkey meets BoJack Horseman. This is essentially me in a band, but I'm not in it. That's so weird, yo. Mr. Peanut Butter is a pretty good song. I think you should listen to it. Jordan Thornquest, I am honestly really sad for all of you because a good chunk of y'all will never meet Jordan in your life. I love this dude, and that doesn't mean I'm adding him to this list just because he's my friend. I genuinely think that he's He's phenomenally gifted. His last DP, Late Bloomer, was pretty harrowing, emotional, bluesy, pop, punk, rock vibes. It, it was all really good. It seriously blew me away the first time I heard it, and he is more than deserving of your attention. Man Seeking Pity is a straight bop, yo. Hekra. I've actually used Hekra's music in my depression video, you know, at the very end, and also like the Screamo song. Yes, those two songs are by the same artist. Hekra is a solo artist from Chicago who does a weird, bizarre mix of hardcore, pop punk, alternative, math rock, metal, and pop. When it goes hard, it crushes your face in with sheer brutality. But when it wants to sound pretty, it takes my breath away. This artist captures highs and lows within a matter of seconds, and it's crazy. I hope he plays live someday because he's one of my favorite artists at the moment. Listen to This Is Cinema, please. The Marshmallow Ghosts. Savannah, Georgia sounds like a place that I'd like to visit just to get a taste of the music scene. The Marshmallow Ghosts is an experimental shoegaze alternative band with heavy McFreaking Halloween vibes. They release a different project once a year ranging from storybooks to scary stories to music releases. And their music is outstanding. I own it on CD, DVD, and vinyl. Their self-titled is wonderful if you enjoy fall vibes. Like it fills me with so much joy and excitement. Here, White Satin Gown. Same terrible, all right. This is a 12-piece freak folk psychic psychedelic alternative local group. Does that sound boring and pretentious? You're darn INCORRECT! There's nobody like them that I've ever heard in the production quality and sophistication for their music given that it is a local group in my area is outstanding. Some of these jams belong in an indie movie trailer. Their unflinching reflections on the human condition and the inevitability of death and oblivion are mainstays in their lyrics, and they dabble in Americana folklore in their imagery. They're just... 
Good. Please jam out to them. They're tough to track down, but you'll be happy that you found them. Listen to shadows before you die, please. Scratch 21. All right. If you can get past the anthropomorphic animal artwork, this group is stellar. Their sound is akin to like a cleaner and more polished Blink-182 without the 90s attitude and more modern day sensibilities. They straight up destroy the whole nice guy friend zone caricature with their song Sorry Jack and include that to this day poem about bullying in one of their singles too. If you can get past the cartoony aesthetic, this band is definitely worth a listen to. Check out Sorry Jack. And finally, Illustrated Axe. Have you seen that other 21 Pilots talent show video? Those guys have a band and it's pretty good. They're very 21 Pilots influenced, but they have their own thing going on. I'm a really big fan of their album Elementary, which is super DIY, and you can hear it in the recording quality, which totally adds to the charm. This band doesn't exist to get popular or make money. They just want to make music because they want to. That can be said for almost all groups on this list, but it definitely shines through with these guys. Give them some love and hear fine dining and breathing. This is just a super weird question. Are you a nudist by any chance? If the answer is no, you probably need clothes, don't you? Well, don't worry, because I got you covered at the Nate is Lame official web store. You can get t-shirts and sweatshirts. We have right here a pretty sick little t-shirt that says, Welcome to the Heck Parade. Right over here, the infamous ST Demon Seed t-shirt. All the other ones you see in stores? Yeah, those are fakes. This is the only real one. How about this cute little sweatshirt? You can totally ask your crush out in this thing. It's glorious. T-shirts are around $16 each. The sweatshirts are about $30. Plus, we do international too. Are you in England? Canada? I don't care. You can buy our stuff. Just might cost a little bit more for shipping and handling. I don't know. You can find the store at bit.ly slash lame store. The link is in the description. By buying merchandise, you not only help me. Actually, that's it. You only help me. I'm trying to build a case against my parents to prove that this YouTube thing could be like a legit job. Your contributions will help. Muchas gracias. Take care. Stay safe. Stay spicy.